There's another passage, Mark 10, 18. Mark 10, 18, which is also in Luke 18, 19. You may have come across this. The man comes and asks Jesus about, what should I do to have eternal life? What's the good thing for me to do? And Jesus says, why do you, call, why do you ask me about the good? There's no one good but God. Now, apparently, Mark, writing that, didn't have a theological hiccup. But now let me, you know, I'm a good Episcopalian, okay? Why should you ask Jesus about the good? God's the only one who's good. Sound weird? If Jesus is actually God, then you wouldn't say it like that. In other words, this sounds like whoever this saying, it sounds like Jesus himself is denying that he's God. Don't ask me about the good. The only one who knows about good is God. And then Jesus goes on and answers the question. I think this saying was actually something like this was said by the historical Jesus. Why? Because early followers of Jesus believed Jesus, Jesus was God in some sense. I don't think this is something they would invent. It goes against their confession. It goes against their theology. So it's one of these cases where it's dissimilar to their faith. And therefore, we tend to give it higher grade when it comes to uh, histor his historicity. A couple of other criteria are, are a bit weaker. These are the two strongest. Social coherence. This is when you say, when you see something that is either anachronistic and it doesn't look like it would fit in with the life of Jesus, or it does fit very well with the life of Jesus. If I decide, for example, on lots of different other sayings that I've decided are historical because of these other reasons, and then something looks like it, a saying of Jesus looks like it's apocalyptic, and I've already established that Jesus was an apocalyptic prophet, then I'm going to say, well, it coheres with the social situation of, of Jesus as an apocalyptic prophet in Galilee. Or take a, a negative example. In Matthew 18, there are a lot of rules about what you should do in the church. The very word church is used. Almost all of us scholars would say, a lot of that stuff in Matthew 18 about the church, the church rules, the church leadership, that's not historical. Why? Because the church didn't exist in Jesus' lifetime. Was, did Jesus think he was the Messiah? I think this is a really big problem. I don't know. There seem to be places where he makes no open claim to Messiahship in his ministry, except in the Gospel of John, remember? So the Gospel of John, actually, we tend to treat that as less historically reliable in these things because it looks very much more Christian theological confession. But in the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus doesn't make open claims to being Messiah. On the other hand, he was executed for being king of the Jews. So the Romans at least thought he was claiming to be the Messiah, or they thought that other people were claiming that about him. Jesus himself, I believe, never saw himself as the founder of Christianity. He didn't think about himself as starting a new religion. So the way I would do this is Jesus was an apocalyptic Jewish prophet who was executed because the Romans at least believed that he, was, he or his disciples were making dangerous claims that he was the king of the Jews. That's all you get on the historical Jesus.